At some level, we've all had experiences or signs where we've connected to our deceased loved ones. Whether it was from a gentle touch to, you know, flickering lights or seeing numbers and patterns, or even having an animal or a bird join us, we've all experienced something. So in this episode, I'd really like to share my story of how I connected with my Nono Pasquale when he passed so that it might be able to help you on your journey because I know this is a really delicate subject for so many of us, but that's why this video is so important. I also want you to remember that we are all energy beings and energy cannot be destroyed. This is the season of giving and I have a gift for you guys. I teamed up with Skillshare. It's a creative learning community to help your inner artist, no matter what your experience level is. There are thousands of courses for you to choose from, including watercolor painting, filmmaking, leadership skills. I took writing and blogging with passion by Teresa Christine because I found her teaching style ideal for me. Plus, Skillshare now has subtitles in languages like Spanish and French. Now you can stop putting off your personal growth and start creating. These courses were made to empower you and there are no ads and no distractions to your creative journey. Skillshare is sponsoring this video. So to give you a crazy good deal, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. You have until the end of November, 2021. So when my nonno Pasquale passed, he was living in Canada and I was very far away living in Los Angeles. And he had been diagnosed with cancer and was fighting, he was fighting it for a few years. You know, I tried to visit him as often as I could, but of course life takes you over and I didn't get to see him as often as I wanted to. And I remember one afternoon I got the phone call where he was getting really sick. And I thought, hopefully this is just another one of those false alarms. But then about a few hours later, I got the second phone call and I knew what was happening and I could feel my body all of a sudden shrinking. I could feel the panic taking me over where all of a sudden this was it. And I remember picking up that phone call and hearing that he had just passed. And all of a sudden, my entire body just went limp. And I just got so overwhelmed with this feelings of the, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to him. I didn't get a chance to tell him I loved him. I didn't get a chance to hug him. And that really crushed me. So I remember running into the living room and I went and sat in front of the fireplace. I lit up the fireplace and I just sat there and I had this panic where I had to find him, right? I was just like, he had just passed, but I was like, I had to find him. So I remember closing my eyes and just going inwards. And it was like, I started flying. It almost felt like I was flying in the stars and I was just looking for him. And, and I felt like that mom that loses her her kid in the mall where she's panicked, where she doesn't have a lot of time, but she just really wants to find her kid. I was kind of going through all those feelings, but I was trying to stay focused at the same time. And I was flying around looking for him and I could feel other beings and other things all around me. And I remember myself being like, focus, focus. And I just had a strong image of him in my mind in my third eye, in my heart. And I held that image as I flew around in this other dimension. And then I just started calling out for him, you know, in my, in my mind, maybe out loud too, I can't remember right now, but definitely in my mind, I just started yelling out, you know, no, no, Pasquale, where are you? Where are you? And it was really hard. And you know, I could feel myself getting really emotional and I just kept flying and I, I, st I kept screaming, you know, I, I didn't get to say goodbye. I didn't, I didn't get to hold you. So I, I kept flying in this other dimension, in this other realm. And then all of a sudden, I just felt him. 
And it's like I felt him come into the room with me. And all of a sudden, when I felt his presence and I recognized his vibration, I kind of smiled and I said to him, you know, um, I said to him that he finally got to visit me in California because he never traveled. And I was so happy that he got to see my house and he got to be in my space for the first time. And I could just feel him all around me. And I, I said, I want to dance with you. I just had this impulse. So I, I ran over to the stereo and I turned the stereo on and I put on his favorite song. It was like a Pavarotti song. And I just started you know, I put out my arms and I just started dancing with him. And it just felt like the whole room was swirling and spinning. And it was so beautiful. It was so magical. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this is so amazing. And I could feel his energy saying to me, you know, it's time for me to go. I have, I have to move on. And I, I was a little bit begging for him to stay, but I knew that he couldn't stay. I was kind of like, I, I knew that this was a very special moment, that it, it wasn't going to last for hours. So as I felt his energy starting to leave, I just asked him, I said, if this was all real, if you are really here with me right now, can you leave me a sign? Can you leave me a confirmation? And, and then all of a sudden I just felt a, whew, and it was like the energy that was around me was gone and the room was empty. So then I just sat quietly, you know, in this space and I didn't think much of it. I was still trying to process everything that I had just experienced with him. So the next morning, you know, I was walking down the stairs and... I walk into the living room and I kind of looked in the distance and I see this big puddle on the floor. It almost looked like somebody grabbed a bottle of red wine and just poured it all over my floor. I quickly turned around and I ran back up the stairs. And as I was running up the stairs, there's like a glass hallway and these birds all of a sudden just started to smack the window as I was going up this choo, 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 choo. so now I was a little bit freaked out like oh my gosh okay message loud and clear to the point that I ran into the bedroom I dove under the sheets I put the blanket over my head and then I asked my husband I was like hey did did you wake up in the middle of the night did you spill something and he's like no I didn't do any of that and I just kind of sat there with and I grabbed my pillow and I just held my pillow and I kissed and like just felt like I was talking to my grandfather and I was just thanking him for visiting me and leaving me such a clear message and for some reason after this my energy my psychic abilities really took off I don't know traveling into that other dimension I opened up so many windows I unlocked so many doors because I didn't care. I was going to look for my grandfather and I wanted to find him. So all of a sudden, I started to become really sensitive around people. I started to be able to know, not read their minds so much, but I could read their secrets. I could read their thoughts. It was almost like I was channeling the information. And I also remember like I was driving in the car and I thought for a second, oh, my grandfather came to visit me again. But what I realized as I looked over, I was like, uh, actually, that's not my grandfather. I realized I had just picked up an energetic hitchhiker. When my mystical gifts kind of got too intense, where I didn't want to read all of this information around me, I saw it more like I just started closing these windows. And knowing that they're not permanently closed. If I want to access that information, I just have to open up that window. But at least I knew that I had the ability to close and shut down the energy, or I could open it up and connect to it. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this story and this experience is because I want you to know 
that your loved ones are close by, that your loved ones are all around you. And I just wanted to share my story and my experience because maybe you've had something similar happen to you and I want you to know that it was real, that it did happen. And sometimes by sharing it, we start to learn how the other side is communicating with us. So I just wanted to give you a recap on how I connected with my Nono Pasquale. So number one, remember I set my intention. My intention was I was going to find him in this other dimension. Number two, I sat there and I started to raise my own frequency and I was pulling light and energy all around me, making myself bigger than ever. And then number three, I held his image within my third eye and in my heart, just focusing on him within these spaces. Number four, I flew around in this other dimension until I could find his frequency, his vibration that I was so familiar with. And then number five, I accepted the connection, right? I didn't let my logical mind get in the way until later. I just enjoyed this precious time that I was having with him. And then number six, confirmation, right? I simply asked him if he could confirm that we actually had this connection. I didn't really have any expectations, but it was really nice when I got that confirmation. I would also love to hear your story and your experiences that you've had with deceased loved ones. You could pop them into the comments because I feel like the more that we share, the more we get that energy moving. And if you would like to connect with a deceased loved one, I put together a guided meditation for my mystical members to help you through this whole process. And if you'd like more information on how to become a mystical member, just press on the link below and it'll take you right there. Remember, you are a light being having a human experience. Until next time, I'm Marisa Greco, your mystical guide.